Hello and welcome back. And that is right. Would you believe it? Today we're going to talk about a brand new Ugreen NAS. This is a brand that feels like, at least in the world of NAS, that they've been around for about five minutes. And although realistically they've actually been around since late 2020 with solutions in China originally, it's only really been in the last year, year and a half that they've been an established player in the world of home and home labbing NAS storage. Now this solution I want to talk about today is the DH4300. There's also with the H2300 we'll touch on it a little bit more in a bit these are two new value series nas devices so this isn't going to be replacing this this is the dxp 4800 available in standard and uh, plus series model the nas we're going to talk about today is not replacing this it is the brand further expanding their portfolio now, full disclaimer, we've kind of known about this, and by we, I mean the internet, for about two, two and a half months. And a big part of this is thanks to the IF or IF Design Awards 2025, when both the two and the four bay variation of the DH series was unveiled there. Now, from there, little trickle bits and bobs have appeared, and the most recent one being during Prime Day of all things, when uh, Ugreen started establishing discounts across a number of their products, and there was a discount on a NAS device that no one had seen before, and it was available to buy. That is a stealth launch and a half. Now, the 4Bay is currently $429. There is a discount, as I say right now, taking it to $349.99. But again, that is with their 20% discount. I don't know how long that's going to be on there. Let's not assume that's the price. Let's stick with $429 for now. There's no pricing on the two, at least at the time of recording this video. So let's talk a little bit about this. Who's it aimed at? What's it for? What can it do that this can't? and whether you should actually care. So the first thing to discuss is the design. Uh, this is a vertical injection NAS. It's not like this one here. I would argue it's a little bit similar to some early uh, WD stuff. Uh, it measured 155 by 155 by 215 centimeters. They are, of course, just talking about the four bay for now. The four bay supports traditional RAID, uh, RAID 5, uh, RAID 6, RAID 0, RAID 1, that kind of stuff. And of course, expanding RAID over time is possible within that drive. Now, before we get onto the ports and connections, a few things to establish. Number one, this is a value series device. So do not think we are talking about anything comparable to the DXP series. I would argue this is for simplified storage, multimedia storage at the low home level, having as a target backup for family members, or if you want to expand across an existing network storage that you have like the DXP, I want to have an SMB backup target on the local area network or using remote access stuff using, for example, Ugreen's own uh, remote access relay protocol, or you can use things like Tailscale to establish connections between a more powerful device and this one. Now, a big part of this being a value series box is the CPU. It's not rocking out with some higher end Intel or AMD there. This is rocking out with a rock chip, the RK3588C. This is an eight core, 2.4 gigahertz processor. It also has an AI component uh, capable of up to six tera operations per second. Now, this CPU is efficient A. F. This is not going to be giving you hardware transcoding. This is not going to be blowing your socks off. And ultimately, I know 8 core sounds exciting. And the fact that it has integrated graphics at Mali um, 60, I believe, or G610, if I remember that correctly. Ultimately, as big as those numbers sound, these are all still efficiency numbers. This is a CPU that we've found in portable devices. We found this CPU inside mobile NAS devices. Hell, I'm pretty sure I've seen this CPU in handheld gaming systems right now. What I'm saying is this is a value system and that CPU is about efficiency to the brim. Now, alongside that, it also arrives with eight gigabytes of uh, LPDDR4 memory. Now, it can't be upgraded, not a huge surprise when running on an ARM processor like this, but it's a 64 gig ARM there, and it also arrives with 32 gig of EMMC memory inside the system for the OS. Talking about installing other operating systems, I'm sure some people are going to wonder that. Given the ARM architecture, some operating systems don't play nice with that, I think. There's been some early experimentation with Unraid. I think Open Media Vault can run on 64-bit ARM processors there, but it's still not ideal. So although uh, Ugreen have not said the stance on third-party OS is on this, I would say this hardware architecture does beg how much you would be able to use those anyway. Now, on the subject of storage, the 2-bay has 2 SATA, the 4-bay has 4 SATA, but there is no 
M.2 NVMe like on the DXP series. Again, if you look at value series devices, if you compare this to uh, Synology's J series, if you compare this to QNAP's uh, TSX33 series, very rarely do ARM powered systems have M.2 NVMe slots as well as additional storage. Sometimes they have focused M.2 storage and no SIA, but very rarely do they have both. So I'm not a huge surprised that they're not there. Um, one thing I will say that I'll be put out by, it only has one 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Now, arguably, this is a home NAS, this is a low end NAS, and you've got four SATA bays in there that probably can't crack four to 500 uh, megabytes per second in a good rate on any given day. However, at that price point of $429 without tax, I think there should at least be a 2.5 or a 1 gig. There should be a failover there. You can use some of the USB that we'll touch on later on, I'm sure, to use some adapters, but again, ARM architecture, we'll have to wait and see. But still, nonetheless, one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port feels tight. It's not the end of the world for the target user for this device, but do keep that in mind. And to conclude connectivity, there is an HDMI 4K 60 Hertz output there, and that's thanks to that CPU, although being ARM, having integrated graphics on board, and it has USB ports, one USB-C at five gigabits per second, so that's USB 3.2 Gen 1, but it has two 10 gig USBs, which is gonna be great for adding additional drives to create a multi-tiered backup solution there, or just synchronizing day-to-day -day storage on the go. As I say, that's actually quite nice that it's got 10 gig UMBs, uh, USBs on an ARM base. Again, not unusual in the general sense, but definitely for this architecture and the small amount of resources that CPU is going to be able to stretch out. I'm really pleased to see them here. So what are you going to be able to do with this hardware in terms of software? Well, the software that's going to arrive with UGOS is a slightly clipped wings, and I do mean slightly clipped wing version of what UGS, uh, UGOS is like on the traditional DXP series. Pretty much all the apps are there, but some of the more aggressive ones like virtualization are not going to be on there. There is support of snapshots, there is support of Docker, there is support of AI photo recognition, facial location, there's also semantic search. Again, thanks to that CPU having a little bit more under the bonnet to play with. File folder exploration, um, backup operations, multi-tier backup operations from cloud to SMB and web dev are supported there. Multimedia applications to manage the 4K output as well as music and more are included here. There is a Docker application if I haven't already mentioned it and forgot. The point I'm making is you're missing out on some of the more aggressive applications, sure, because of the hardware level, but the baseline fundamental applications on this value series device are present. And as long as you're gonna keep that within context in terms of what you're getting here, this could make a really great baseline low level NAS. And I'm glad that you green rolled out the more aggressive DXP series before they started filling the gaps either side in the portfolio of the two, the four bays, etc., with these nice value series devices allowing people to create multi-tiered backups or thinking this might be a bit OTT in terms of price and hardware and now they have a more affordable, low power consuming option. But ultimately, is it gonna be a good NAS? We don't know. Obviously, we've ordered one here for the channel, so hopefully one will arrive here in due course. We'll have to wait and see how and when that happens. And when it does, of course, we're gonna review it. Power consumption, heat, performance, software, the works. So stay tuned for that. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a fantastic week.